Uh, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. For section 14.2, we're going to start looking into concentration of our solutions. And so we're going to look at how much solute is dissolved into our solvent to make our solution. And so we're going to describe concentration using our terms molarity and percent by mass. And we'll look at today calculating the molarity and percent by mass of different solutions. So the idea here, concentration, how much solute is being dissolved? And so we can look at you know how concentrated uh, the solution actually is. And our two ways to do that, molarity, abbreviated with the M, and percent by mass. So at the top of the next page, molarity is M. Make sure that we write this definition down number of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. Now for molarity, I can just take out there. Molarity abbreviated with the number M, letter M, and then the moles of solute over liters of solution. Now a couple things to remember, moles of solute, remember to go moles to grams or grams to moles periodic table molar mass is needed. Liters of solution many times you'll see milliliters 1000 milliliters equals one liter. So remember both of these ideas because we'll be using those. The more solute you dissolve the more or higher the molarity is. The more water or solution you have, the more dilute the concentration or the molarity is. So to try a couple problems out. Um, our first one says you have a 125 milliliter solution that contains 5.1 grams of glucose, which is C6H12O6. What is the molarity of the solution? So right away what we're looking at is molarity is equal to our moles of the sol our solute divided by the liters of solution. So we know that we have 510 grams or 5.1 grams of glucose. We need to turn that into moles using the PT. So six carbons, eight or 12 hydrogens, six oxygens, it's going to have a molecular mass of about 180.1 gram, grams. So 510 grams is equal to 181.1 grams per mole. Now as we're going, what we're going to look at today is if you then had our five 0.1 grams of glucose. We need to get it into moles, so one mole of glucose would be equal to the 180.1 grams of glucose. So grams cancel our grams, and we're left with our moles of glucose. Uh, 5.1 divided by 180, I got about 0 0.0283 and that would be our moles of glucose. Now the other thing is we're in milliliters. We need to be in liters. So a thousand milliliters equals one liter. Or we could move the decimal place three places over. Two, five, milliliter or liters would be the same thing. So using our equation molarity number of moles over our volume If we were to take 
0.0283 moles of glucose divided by the 1.25 liters of glucose, we'd get a molarity of about 0 0.226, and we're just going to use capital M to stand for molarity of glucose. That would tell us mathematically how concentrated our solution is, how many moles per liter of water that we would have. Continuing with this idea, we can switch around to solve for something else. How much calcium hydroxide in grams is needed to produce 1.5 liter of solution? That's 0.25 molars in concentration. So this time around, we need to find out how much calcium hydroxide we'd need. Now remember, worst, we'll solve in moles and then have to go to grams. So to set this problem up, we can rearrange our equation. We started out molarity was equal to the moles divided by the liters, and now we want to solve for moles. So the number of moles of our solute is going to be equal to the molarity times the amount of liters that we have. So we have our amount of molarity With calcium hydroxide times liters, 1.5 liters. This would give us approximately 3.75 moles of calcium hydroxide. In order to make a 0.25 molar solution, that's 1.5 liters in amount. Now, since we're in moles, we want to get to grams. So we're going to need our periodic table to go from moles to grams. Now using our periodic table, one calcium, two oxygens, and two hydrogens is going to give us a molecular mass of about 74.1 grams over one mole. So our moles would cancel our moles, 0.375 times 74.1 we would have about 27.9 grams of calcium hydroxide would be needed if we wanted to make a 0.25 molar solution giving us that we had 1.5 liters of solute to begin with or solvent to begin with. Now our other way to do concentration is percent by mass and so percent by mass make sure we write down this idea it's the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution. So it's the entire solution is going to be the key part. So our equation percent by mass, mass of the solute, divided by mass of the solution times 100. So that gets us to our percent. Now notice mass of solution is the solute and the solvent added together. So it's the entire mass of what we're looking at. So please note that in your notes. So to try a percent by mass. In lab, a student adds 4.5 grams of sodium chloride to 100 grams of water. Calculate the percent by mass of solution. So what we're looking at is our percent by mass, percent by mass, would equal the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution. Now remember, mass of the solvent, our solute, excuse me, is 4.5 grams. Plus, or divided by mass of solution is the 100 grams of water plus the 4.5 grams of sodium chloride. So now we're looking at 4.5 grams over 104.5 grams. So note that key step there times, whoops, times 100.
to get us to a percent. 4.5 divided by that 104.5 equals about 4.3 percent sodium chloride. So 4.3 percent of the solution is sodium chloride. That'll stop our concentration. We'll continue on with some calculations.